pacemakers are amazing things. From the very early days as external worn devices to today's modern marvels, these tiny, powerful pieces of electronics ensure that the heart of the person they're fitted in beats regularly, ensuring blood is pumped around the body as it should be. Their companions, ICDs, implanted cardioverter defibrillators, offer similar life-saving capabilities, ensuring that the person they are fitted to doesn't suffer a superfast or an irregular heart rhythm that can cause their heart to go into cardiac arrest. And some even operate as pacemakers at the same time. It's all pretty amazing stuff. But because these devices work by delivering pulses of electrical energy to the heart, effectively shocking your heart either into a regular rhythm or stopping a potentially dangerous one in the process, their function can be affected by powerful magnets or electromagnetic radiation. This has led many people to question if it's safe for folks with pacemakers and ICDs or other implanted cardiac devices and monitors to own and drive an electric car. After all, electric cars have hulking big old motors in them, motors that consume a lot of power, and concerned non-scientific tin hat wearers often agree, produce lots of dangerous electromagnetism, or EMF if you prefer. Like the current FUD surrounding 5G networks. Yeah, I had to explain to someone last week that 5G networks didn't cause the coronavirus. I felt it was worth going over this topic again, even though we've covered it before. Why? A new study out from the Technical University of Munich, working alongside the German Centre for Cardiovascular Research and Wellington Hospital in New Zealand. And in case you didn't know, I do have some personal skin in this game, as members of my family suffer from a condition called Long QT Syndrome. It's a genetic condition that can lead to your heart doing weird things. My late sister had a combined ICD pacemaker, and my mother has a pacemaker, although actually not for the long QT, it's for something else. And me? Well, I have an implanted cardiac monitor which sits just under here, under the skin, and keeps an eye on my heart rhythm. So this topic is one I am very keen to properly discuss, given my job and my health. To the study and some basics about electromagnetic radiation and electric car motors. I'm not going to go into the inner workings of how an electric motor works, but it's important to know that when you pass a current of electricity through a coiled wire inside the electric motor, a small electromagnetic field is generated that reacts with another electromagnetic field generated by a second set of coiled wires with current passing through or with a permanent powerful magnet within the motor. And it's the interaction of these two electromagnetic fields which causes the motor to turn. In this particular study, a team of 108 test subjects, all of which had implanted cardiac devices of some description, were asked to charge and then drive four different electric cars on a rolling road. A Nissan Leaf, a Tesla Model SP85, a BMW i3 and a Volkswagen e-up. In order to simulate the motors being pushed to their absolute limits, the rolling road's resistance was turned way up to force the car's motors to work at peak power which is also when the highest levels of electromagnetic radiation would be present from the motor. More power flowing through the motor equals more EMF. Measuring the EMF inside the car, the researchers noted that radiation levels were well under the level required to cause physical harm to the occupants. Electric car motors produce non-ionizing radiation, which means they don't have enough energy to harm living tissue. They were also well under the level required to cause the implanted cardiac devices to malfunction, which is probably why none of the participants suffered any issues with their cardiac devices. The study's findings mimic those of similar studies over the years, down to the finding that charging cars results in more EMF inside the vehicle than driving them. Even then, though, those levels were far below anything considered dangerous. Why? Well, that's pretty simple. Electromagnetic radiation, regardless of the type, light is on the electromagnetic spectrum too, follows the inverse square law. This states that the intensity of any electromagnetic wave radiating from a point source is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. In other words, any EMF that actually gets it past the motor casing itself is pretty darned weak by the time it gets to you. And although implanted cardiac devices are still often implanted with a warning that their recipients shouldn't get too close to a magnet, 
It's usually only things like powerful neodymium magnets placed directly adjacent to the implanted device, or powerful magnetic imaging apparatus like MRIs that you actually have to worry about. Even then, many modern implanted devices have been designed to enable technicians operating such machines to safely tweak the settings to avoid damaging the implant and causing harm to its wearer. So there you have it. Electric cars and pacemakers, ICDs and other implanted devices can be good friends. Having given both my sister and my mother rides in various electric cars over the years, as well as spending several years with my own implanted devices while driving them, I'm very glad to hear this news. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon or buy us a coffee through Ko-fi. I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. But until then, stay safe, wash your hands and as always, keep evolving.